Um, so yeah, I'm Helen. Uh, this is my colleague Ben. Uh, we're doing a sort of split presentation today, um, so I'm going to kick things off. Um, firstly, I'd just like to say thank you very much to Lindsay um, for all your hard work in putting the event together and for inviting us along. Um, so I'm the communications and membership coordinator of the SROI network. Um, so what does that mean? Who are we? Uh, formed in 2008, we're entering our seventh year and we're based in Liverpool. We're very proud to be based in Liverpool. There's a lot of fantastic stuff, as you just heard, around SROI and social value that's happening here. Um, so we primarily exist to promote and support the measurement and management of social value across the world. So essentially we're a membership organisation. Um, we're international. Um, we have over 800 members in 44 different countries, I think, at the moment. Um, and we promote and support social value through four main activities. So we've got membership, training, assurance, which I'll go on to explain a bit more about, and our tools and resources, which is Ben's department. Um, OK, so membership. As I said, over 800 members in 44 different countries. Um, we also have seven affiliated national networks, including Australia, Japan, Canada and Hong Kong and a few other places. Um, so we're really trying to stretch this international agenda. Um, there's a lot of reception uh, for social value in different parts of the world, especially in Australia. Um, so we're really making sort of strides in getting this on the international agenda as well. Um, and we basically, as a membership organisation, we form a community of people committed to looking at value in a different way. So that is our primary agenda. I really liked Eric's line of making the invisible visible. And it's only through this sort of global movement and getting people on board that we're really going to have any chance of stretching it from the local agenda to the international one. So membership. Uh, membership is currently £50 a year. Um, what do you get for that? Well, apart from <coughs> being this community of people um, belonging to a sort of political movement, uh, we provide information, so we have newsletters, we have an online members only area, um, which is basically stacked. We have, I think, just over 250 reports, both impact reports and SRI reports. So if you're interested in what some of these things look like, what kind of subjects there on immigration, education, development, that kind of thing, then you can log into our members area and have a look. Uh, we also provide help and support from the office. Um, savings, we have discount on training and events and uh, one magazine as well. Uh, networking, so as Adam mentioned before, uh, we have a regional meeting coming up, Northwest Regional Meeting. Uh, but we also run regional meetings in Yorkshire and Humber, North East, London. So it's an opportunity for local members to get together, talk about geeky technicalities of social value or cultural barriers they're coming up against doing it in their organisation, how you can communicate it better. And it's, it's a really great opportunity to get together with like-minded individuals and share ideas about things. Uh, we also have members-only webinars. Um, so just as Lindsay has done here, you could have the opportunity to get online to our 800 members, tell people about what you're doing, get feedback from them, that kind of thing. Uh, and we have a LinkedIn group as well, which is fairly vibrant. Lots of discussions that go on there. Uh, and we also provide professional development. Um, so through the SRI network, you can become an accredited practitioner and get assurance. This is one of the most important things that we do. So as Eric said before, in order for this to get any currency and to be taken seriously by people, what needs to happen is that there's an independent a kind of an independent acknowledgement that you're applying the principle as well. So in the same way that you have auditing for financial uh, accounts, we provide independent assurance for your SRI report. So, you know, if if you're if you've never done a report before, you apply the principles and you come up with a ratio of £10 to £1 invested, you go out to funders, the funders are going to say, how do we know that? On what criteria have you based this? What experience do you have, etc.? If you get our assurance, then we can basically give you some sort of independent verification, whether you're on the right tracks and whether you're not. So now I will hand over to Ben to talk about the tools and resources.
Okay, thank you, Alan. Um, yeah, so this is us, the SRI Network. Um, we don't have all the answers, but we certainly uh, like to think that we're here to support you all. And uh, uh, some of you uh, have got lots of experience in SRI. Some of you perhaps never heard of it. And, and it's often quite daunting. And even when you sort of have had a go at doing it, you still think, well, how can we make it easier? So one of the things that we do at the SRI Network <coughs> is to try and develop some sorts, sorts of tools and resources to make it a bit easier. Um, and that's what I'm going to whistle, uh, rush through today because we've got four, um, well, there's three tools and that's more of a, a campaign that we're doing, um, which uh, might have time to discuss. But basically, I'm going to be talking about the Global Value Exchange, Social Value Commissioning, and first of all, the SRI self-assessment tool. So yeah, kicking off with the self-assessment tool. This was launched uh, actually this year and produced by uh, Hall Aitken, who are actually um, a member of the SRI network based in Scotland. Uh, and you'll be pleased to know it's all free to use for members and non-members. Uh, what is it? So there's, there's three strands to this self-assessment tool. Uh, firstly, there's um, a guide to SRI, um, and it's uh, very um, short. <laughs> in, in essence, it's written with no jargon. That's what it claims to be. It's two pages long, and it sets out the context to the self-assessment process. Um, which is in fact an online tool uh, where you can log in, just create a, an account, it's all free, um, carry out this simple self-assessment. And the self-assessment is really looking at the work that you're already doing and assessing it along the principles of social return investment, which we've mentioned quite a lot already. Um, and through doing that self-assessment, you, you'll realise hopefully that, oh, actually, Social return investment isn't this you know, really difficult thing that I have to employ someone to do or it takes a year to do. There's elements of social return investment that, that I'm already doing. So that's the aim of uh, the self-assessment tool. And then uh, the third strand to it, which is actually part of the guide, is some very practical steps that uh, um, the self-assessment tool recommends if you're looking to improve your um, practice within a certain principle. So take a principle like um, involving stakeholders, for example. Well, you may already be doing a lot of that. You may be talking to your stakeholders about uh, impact a lot. Uh, but here, you know, the guide just offers three quick tasks um, and that just, we think it's really useful then for someone to, you know, apply these principles. Um, so in a bit more detail, uh, the, the two-page outline explains why, what, uh, and how to start doing an SRI. Um, it focuses on five, que five key questions, which is who changes, how do they change, how do you know they change, how much of that change is down to you, and how important are the changes. And it's those five key questions that run right through social return investment at any level of applying these principles. Uh, the, the guide in these two pages, um, honestly, they're a magic two pages. You want to read them. I just love them. <laughs> They've got, it just sim breaks it down really simply. Um, and it does mention the seven principles um, of SRI. And they sort of help you to answer those five questions. Um, I should have mentioned at the beginning that all these documents that I'm mentioning are leaflets that we've got with us today. And they'll be available downstairs. So just pick one up, take it away. Um, our details are there as well. So if you need any help, just contact us. Um, so the online assessment, as I was saying, uh, free to create an account, um, really simple, uh, shouldn't take too long to complete. Um, ideally, do it with a group of your colleagues so it becomes more of a collaborative process, maybe as part of one of your staff meetings. And you'll see there's seven sections that goes with the seven principles and each section has only three questions. So it's a case of... Um, multiple choice um, and you just basically think about what you're already doing about so this section is being transparent as uh, Adam mentioned a, a key principle of social return investment and they're just three simple questions with options like we do not have any data readily available or we have some data and you just basically get an idea as to how transparent you're being at the moment and at the end uh, it gives you this lovely uh, visual which basically says uh, along each of the seven principles, you're doing well here, uh, better on this one, not so good on that one, and you know a bit of feedback, which 
is good because hopefully you go where you think, okay, how can I improve being engaging my stakeholders or valuing things? Um, whether that's through, I don't know, coming on our training, <laughs> little plug there, or uh, <laughs> just uh, doing the practical steps that are in the, the guide. You sh should be able to say, okay, we're doing better now. And then six months time, just go through those questions again and it should give you another score then and you can see where you've improved. Um, so yeah, it's a free tool. It's developed by one of our members because one of our members uh, felt, um, believed quite passionately that SRI was being um, misunderstood to a certain extent that it, that it involved huge amounts of uh, time. Uh, it was very labor intensive and, and needed sort of like that external consultant or something. To a certain degree and to a certain level of rigor, that's true. You can do uh, a really rigorous report and it may take six months to 12 months. But we're really keen to get the message across that you can start small, begin applying these principles be uh, and you are already doing SROI. Um, back to the guide then, a practical advice based on each of the seven principles, giving you three different tasks. Uh, they've got like difficult level, easy, moderate, hard, and the time it may take. So that first one is just bring together a small group of staff, um, get a, a piece of flip chart and do something as simple as that. And once you're doing that, you're starting to get your head into understanding what SRI is all about and these seven principles and answering those five questions, which is who changes, how do they change, how do you know, how much is down to you, that was the question, the, the point that Lindsay brought up, like attribution, uh, is it all down to us or is there another agency that's you know, helping us and how important are the changes and that's where valuation comes in. We talked a lot about valuation earlier and it's about proving. We like to say, well, actually, valuation can do that, but also valuation is important, uh, understanding how important these changes are to the people. So why was it produced? I've probably uh, gone through these, but it was to show that SRI can be applied at different levels of rigor. Um, show people that they're probably already doing bits of SRI that you, you didn't perhaps realize. Uh, and the assessment reveals which areas could be improved and how with the practical steps. So the reaction so far uh, has been received really well by beginners who knew nothing about SRI. It's really got them to grips with uh, what it's about. And it's useful for organisations who, who have been trying to embed SRI but perhaps not sure, well, how do I go about it? Well, these practical steps have really helped just embed it because the uh, tasks have been in, uh, easy to incorporate with staff and stakeholders alike. What next? Pick up a guide, they'll be downstairs. Um, I've been raving about it, so have a read. And yeah, it's all free, so um, have a go. Um, how am I doing for time? Should I speed up? Uh, ne next one then is the Global Value Exchange, um, which Adam very kindly gave a, a, a good review. Uh, so what is the Global Value Exchange? Again, it's a free resource. Um, it's a website we've developed. This is what it looks like. Um, it's free to create an account. Um, and in the simplest way to describe it, it's um, crowdsourced, so anyone can add information. Let me just take that screen back. Crowdsourced like a Wikipedia, so anyone with um, some information can just create an account and upload it. So we're hoping that uh, it becomes a collaborative resource, everyone can add information, and it's a database of um, impact measurement information. So it's split into uh, four real separate categories. Um, and those familiar with the structure of you know, doing an SRI report will know that there's outcomes, which we've talked about a lot today. Um, but once you've got an outcome, you need to know, well, you know, this is a change, but who's uh, affected by that change? So that's the stakeholder. Um, how do you measure that change? Well, you use indicators to measure that outcome. Uh, and also, we've talked a lot about valuations. What is the value of that change to that stakeholder? So effectively, this website is a huge database linking all those things together, and it's open. So we want you guys who are out there being practitioners, working, doing reports to sort of say, right, well, these are the stakeholders I'm working with. These are the changes. This is how we measure it, and this is the value to them. So the overall aim of it is to empower um, organization. So how do you, how does it work? Uh, so you can browse it and search for use, useful information. Uh, I like to say it's a, a great starting point for further research. So if you've never done an SRI before, if you go on there, you get some really good ideas about how you measure certain changes. 
Uh, you can interact. Um, once you've created an account, you can rate entries. Um, the idea when we set this up was be, be, be like the trip advisor. <laughs> so you can uh, five star rating for this indicator, that, you know, if it's really useful to you. So it's this collaborative nature of people online, forming a community, interacting with it. You can leave comments, start debates. If you see an entry and you're not quite sure how this works, just throw on a comment there and um, you'll get people replying. Um, because you'll find once you do more and more of this, it becomes a community and it's really helpful to discuss it. And you can add your own entries and making connections between entries. And if you're an SRI member, you can also edit some things. Here's a few diagrams of, of what it looks like. So you've got the uh, outcome in the middle there, which is a change in adult learning, sort of stakeholders that have been linked to that. Um, and then valuations along the bottom there, like um, knowledge or skills improved by taking a part-time course. If you, and expect, people really like this site if they're looking for that financial proxy. You know, we had a discussion earlier, like, well, how, how do you uh, find a financial proxy for this outcome? I think there's um, over a thousand financial proxies on there. So not to say that they're all right or all appropriate, but it's certainly a fantastic resource for anyone, you know, doing an SRI report and looking for financial proxies. See what other people have used. It's got these sort of uh, matrices, which is like tables, basically, with outcomes from a certain organization. It gets a little bit fancy and uh, uh, <laughs> kind of like ambitious with one of the elements where we're trying to create chains of events. Because as we touched upon earlier, um, someone said, you know, this outcome leads to another outcome, to another outcome. And no change is, happens in isolation. So one change often leads to another change. So we've got an element to the site where we're asking people to say, well, we've noticed with our stakeholders that when this change happens, it often means that change happens. And we've got these visualizations here, which uh, show sort of um, chains of events. So yeah, rating, comments, as I've said, get involved. The more people active on it, the better the resource will become. To sum up, um, it aims to empower stakeholders. Um, so. There's people who are experiencing changes, and those changes are going unheard. This is the opportunity to describe those changes, put them up there, because often outcomes are just defined by funders, or you know th these are the outcomes that should happen um, to your beneficiaries. Well, in, as we all know, there's a range of changes that happen. Some of them are positive, some of them are negative, some are intended, some are unintended. Put them all up there. Um, Sharing good practice. Uh, there's lots of research being done in you know, academics, uh, this university and many others on valuation, on um, certain theories of change. That's all sort of up there um, and it's a good place to share it. And develop some consistency in looking at outcomes and indicators. And even valuation over time, we hope that there'll be um, an agreement that you know, if, if so many people are putting financial proxies around a similar sort of area, you know, maybe 10 years down the line, we'll have some sort of marketplace where we can triangulate and say, oh, well, a lot of people are saying that the value of this outcome for that stakeholder seems to be around about 300 pounds or 400 pounds or whatever. And then it gives evidence to an idea that there might be some sort of agreement on, on, on valuation of non-market outcomes. Reaction so far, it's a growing online community. We've got over 450 registered users, but over a thousand regular visitors to the site, that's per month. Um, and it's from a range of different sectors. As Helen said, internationally we've got a, a wide cover, but also um, uh, from sectors we've got a lot of engagement from the private sector, public sector and um, third sector. The uh, number of entries is growing um, from different uh, countries as well. And we're forming links to other databases. So as this movement of, of collecting information um, spreads, and people are providing software solutions and things like that where people are collecting all this information and we're just trying to be that portal where all the information gets gathered. Um, what next? So we, we're looking for more people to become users, to interact and contribute, especially from academia and from organisations out there collecting information um, the gra uh, grassroots. Uh, and yeah, ideally we want to influence funders and policymakers and say, look, these are the changes that are happening, these are the important ones, these are the value of those changes. And we can do that through this resource, that's what we think. So you can create a, have a look and create a free account. Um, okay, last one, and then I'll hand back to Helen. 
is uh, the less glamorous <laughs> of uh, our three resources. It's still kind of in development. It's called social value commissioning, um, particularly relevant to what Maureen was uh, talking about uh, this morning, especially when you said that um, the Social Value Act uh, talks about pre-procurement stage. Let me just talk you through this. It's like a, a table um, for case studies and good examples of social value commissioning. So you can uh, choose whether it's uh, who's leading the commissioning, whether it's from a single department, organisation, or cross-sector in the whole community, and whether it's uh, at the planning stage, the delivery level, or review. So w what we're hoping with this, again, it's um, crowdsourced, so that we're hoping anyone can just add to it because it was developed in response to the Social Value Act when a um, great piece of legislation, but a lot of people still scratching their heads going, well, how do we apply this? Um, you know, let's see what this really means. So um, we just threw this together really as a sort of platform for sharing good practice. Um, there's only actually 14 on there at the moment, but still worth having a look. And if any of you've got any really good examples of Social Value Commission, we would be delighted if you uh, added them to that because we think it's it's all about sharing good practice. Yeah, that's just an example of what it looks like. So it's not it's not the most glamorous of uh, web resources we've got, but um, could be useful. Handing over to Helen now for some breaking news. Thank you. Just want to put it on there. I'll just hold this. Um, yeah, so uh, as Ben said, um, we've got some breaking news. Um, it's a really exciting time for the network at the moment, entering our eighth year. Um, and over the past month, um, we've released some information. So basically, we're going to be going through a formal collaboration with a charity currently based in London. Um, they're fairly similar to us. They're called Social Impact Analyst Association, or SEA. Um, they also are a membership organisation of people interested in impact measurement. They have lots of country working groups. Um, there's little overlap between where we work, so they have a lot in Hungary, Estonia, countries like that. Um, so basically we're going to be entering into collaboration with them, whereby we are going to become Social Value UK and they are becoming Social Value International. So the aim of this is basically to really unite the organisations and really strengthen the movement. We're going to become um, the UK affiliated sort of branch of Social Value International um, and it's going to enable us basically to focus a lot more on the UK, a lot more on legislation here, maybe enter into a bit more political campaigning around the Social Value Act, what we want it to look like how we want it to have more teeth, that kind of thing, but also spend a lot more time in the UK uh, supporting members, um, looking at how, how we can promote the agenda a lot more here. So uh, this is a map of uh, what Social Value International will look like. All of the countries in blue currently have some sort of working group or affiliated network. So as you can see, we're planning world domination sometime soon. Uh, so yeah, uh, to sum up, it's a great time to join the network um, and we'd really love you to get involved, have questions, have discussions with us. Thanks. <laughs>